My name is Emma Dorton. And my name is Christian Watkins. And we are Christian teens giving our personal insight with facts and stories. Welcome to the TBH Teens Being Honest podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Teens Being Honest podcast. This week's episode, we're going to be going over um, idols, different comparisons that we make, either to celebrities or to different friends, as well as how those can come crumbling down and then what we're supposed to do with that, how we're supposed to react to our plans failing or or our idols just becoming not who we actually want to be, and then either, you know, our success in that or our failure in that. And we're going to be going over that. So the thing I wanted to address is different plans not working out. Different plans that we may think, wow, and when I grow up, I'm, I'm going to be an astronaut, right? That's what I said when I was three. Oh, then, I, then, then when I was four. Oh, man, when I, when I grow up, I'm going to be a firefighter. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Then, I, then when, I, when I was five, wow, when I grow up, I'm going to be a friar. Oh, okay, what? Well, when I was six, fryer. man, I'm going to be a dinosaur. And you said fryer? Yeah, fryer. Could be fryer. Brother? Fryer? Fryer? What is that? Fryer? Like a, like you fry fries? Like a fryer for food? That's what I'm thinking of. Are you going to be a fryer like in a McDonald's? Like a brother. Kitchen? Like a, you know, one that wears the, all the, the brown robes. Has the top oh head. Oh my gosh. Like a Franciscan. The bald thingy, my brother? Yeah. That like my dad. Friars? Yeah. <laughs> dad was a bald, was one of the bald No, he spots. just has one. He huh? just has a bald spot. Oh. That's why I said You're that. such a jokester today. <laughs> Keep on going. I'm so sorry. I didn't cut that part out. I didn't know what a fry. I thought you were like frying up food. But the only thing I was trying to make with that point is none of those plans worked out. Okay. Right now, I'm just a high school student. I don't have any aspirations to be a dinosaur or a firefighter. He gave up on his dreams, kids. Yeah, and I'm super depressed. (laughs) That's what we're going to talk about. No, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not upset. My plan failed and I'm not mad. Now, I don't know why I said when I was one, I had all these aspirations because I don't think I was thinking too much. Oh my gosh. (laughs) But this is so. the point I'm trying to make is... Just because our plans fail or our original plans fail doesn't mean that, that they aren't God's plans. When I was nine months old, I wanted to, I had so many dreams in my life. I just felt like a failure because I couldn't amount to being a dinosaur by the time I was one year old. What is happening? I'm, I'm sorry. That is too much. It's too much. So... When, <clears throat> when our plans come to an end and we just sort of think we fail, we, I'm left thinking, wow, my plan that I set out to do, either going to college, going through high school, whether it succeeds or it fails, you know, success can be, wow, I, I gained popularity or I gained my academics or, or I was true to myself and you know sometimes that success is good but like when it comes to 
you devote yourself to your grades. Wow, I, I got good grades. Now I'm going to get into a good college. And my plan is to have this career. And then that doesn't work out. You're, you're left saying, wow, what am I supposed to do with this failed plan? I, I, w- I went through no, all I this work. I definitely know what you're, you're talking about as I far went as through, like good grades, college. And... I went through all this work. To, Especially because the virus, you know. Mm-hmm. To do this one thing and now it's being ripped away from me. Where am I left at? Exactly. Who, who, this was not the plan. So talking about idols, talking about plans. Um, I, pl- I wanted to be in the NBA. My dream. My what, dream. Was it really? Oh, yeah. Really? I got this big basketball hoop out, Sarah's, And I barely... I use it a lot. <laughs> um, so... My, my, <laughs> I, I cannot look at your facial expressions right now. My my aspirations be in the NBA. I, I would practice. <laughs> I would practice. But I was short, poop. right? I was short. I was short, and I then oh. I gave up that dream. I thought, wow, and I wasn't even a good shooter. And I, I missed my layups. I couldn't shoot with the left hand. And all these problems. Oh, and I thought, boy. wow, this is work. I hate this. <laughs> and then the Warriors lost the NBA Finals. I was just crushed. Man, I didn't want to. I was going to like this summer school thing at the time. And um, I didn't go to. I, I, I went to like maybe five more days of that summer school thing. And there was like three weeks left just because I was so depressed that the Warriors lost the NBA Finals. So you gave up on your dream because of. Man, it was a crappy dream. It would never have worked out. But now we got my second dream. It would never have worked out. Coming into high school. Got my fresh kicks on. And I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm walking inside. And I, 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 I meet these people. And that's who I want to be friends with. And I devoted my life to that. Being friends with those people. And I, I gained that goal. And then that also crumbled when they didn't want to hang out with me. Oh, man, I'm crushed. So then I turned to drugs because I was like, wow, you know, at least I'll have friends. At least I'll be with people. And then, wow, this also sucks. So then I was left, wow, my life sucks. Where am I, what am I supposed to do? All my plans were terrible. All my plans didn't work out. All my plans just failed miserably. And so I thought, man, I must be just a a failure until I, I decided to go to my mom. Now, Christian, I gotta say, this is one of the smartest decisions you've ever made. I went into the situation with my mom and I go t- tell her everything and I confess to her, at least, everything that I had done and how I needed to get out and how nothing worked out for me um, and just where I was at. And she took me from where I was at and brought me to where I, or took me where I wanted to go or on that path. I mean, I wasn't there yet. I'm still not there. We can always be better. We always got to strive to be better. And then my new idol came crashing down. Perfectionism. Woo! I wanted to be perfect. That's where scrutiny comes in. And I, wow, dude, you're not holy enough. You're not holy enough. So I was comparing myself as if I was supposed to be holy right away and I was supposed to, you know, I was comparing myself to like Mother Teresa. Are you kidding me? I thought, wow, am I going to have to yeah. change my toes? I, if I get wait, what? <laughs> toes? <Yes. laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> can, can you see it when you laugh like that? She has, our, she has like really, really... Messed up toes. That's why I said that. I can't even breathe because my nose is stuffed, so my laugh sounds like fucking weird. It's on here. So we go, and yeah. that that <sighs> comparison Sorry. or that plan messes me up, and then I realize. Wait, I wanted to add. I had something to add oh, to add you. It. I know, but then I laughed at the Mother Teresa toe part. Oh. <laughs> and then he moved on, so just cut that out. I want to add something. Okay, ready? Go. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Think about it. Oh, I just wanted to say that I, I agree with you on the whole perfectionist thing and wanting to feel like 
you should be perfect, right? And especially being holy, which honestly is, is a bit unrelatable to most teenagers, especially, well, it was really unrelatable to me back then because I didn't really, you know, feel like I could be as good as all of these people my age or older that, you know, or like Mother Teresa, I could never be as good as them. So why really try my hardest? Which is why I kind of want to put myself off of a pedestal and like really say we are exactly like pretty much all of you guys. The only difference is, I don't even know if it's much of a difference. We just realize that we're trying to try harder and we're trying to do our best. And you know, Jesus never wanted us to be perfect. He just wanted our hearts. And I think that if we can just really repeat that over and over again, that the whole way society paints religion as like a judgmental, um, hateful thing instead of, um, you know, full of forgiveness and full of mercy and understanding. I feel like if we could really just think to ourselves that Jesus doesn't he never wanted us to be perfect. He just wanted our hearts. And we just can work on that, and we can try every single day to give that over. Yeah, and I, I understand that. But did you ever have a plan that was like, me? I did have a, I did have many, many plans. I had many goals. And I had a five-year plan when I was 14 about everything I was going to accomplish that year. So when I was 14, I would... Have 4.0, I was going, I was a freshman in high school and... 15. 14 freshmen in high school? Yeah, I was pretty, I, I was, I'm late, I'm going to graduate at 17, so... You're early. I'm, yeah, that's what, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 16, it's like, you're going to get your license, you're going to get your car, 17, 18, you're going to go away from college after that. High goals, too, I want to go to Harvard. <laughs> like, I was very worldly oriented. I really had many goals that I strived for. And then they stopped really making me happy. And then you're like, oh, shoot, what am I left with now? I just feel like a failure and I feel like I'm not good enough to be any of these people. That's where comparison comes in and that's where feeling like a failure and that our plans will never amount to anything comes in. And that's where I think it's really important to get almost like a slap in the face to realize you know, you don't have to have it all figured out, especially not right now, especially not right now. And I think if we can just have some patience with ourselves and, and try not to compare, try not to, to feel so down about the situation and just realize that Jesus wants us still in the midst of all our mistakes and all of the temptations we've fallen guilty to. So yeah, I think you have a point there about our goals feeling crushed and really just the way that we can move on from that because you can't stay in that spot. You can't stay for years thinking, oh my gosh, my goals were crushed and now I don't know what to do. You have to move on. You have to keep moving and keep trying your best. How do you do that? I'm, I'm going to give my answer to that question, how to combat or how to deal with your plans failing, your idols crashing down, meaning whether it be a friend or a money, success, that failing and not bringing you happiness, not bringing you joy, not bringing what you thought it would, you know, that satisfaction or that safety. And and it just is gone. Then you say, where where am I supposed to go? And and, and you can you can try a whole bunch of different things. You can we we did a podcast on distractions. You can fill it up with as many distractions as you want. But you'll still be just, you know, that's just going to dig a, a deeper hole inside of you that's just wanting something. And that something's God. God wants us. Our hearts are restless till we rest in him. Mm -hmm. How the hell are we supposed to not follow his plan, be happy, and, and go to heaven? Now, okay, you can think, well, I could be a good person and, you know, just have sex sometimes. No, 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 no. You can't do that. That's compromise. You, you can't say, well, you know, I'm a good person and you know, I'm very nice to my mom, very nice to my dad. You know, my brother gets on my nerves sometimes, but uh, that's, you know, I can still smoke weed, smoke weed or, or get high whenever I want. Wait a minute. No, 
no, no, no, that's, that's, that's also just not, that won't fill you up. That's just going to leave you more empty. Right? I'm just saying from personal experience, how the heck is that supposed to fill you up? That's temporary. We long for something eternal. We don't want to just be, you know, happy sometimes and then not happy the other, right? That's when, when you're high or when you, you are lacking that high that you want to go back to it. You, you always talk about you know, when you get high, when you get that euphoria of either sex, drugs, whatever it is, you want to go back to that tiny feeling of happiness, that yeah. tiny feeling of satisfaction, that little joy that comes from that. But that is fleeing. That doesn't that doesn't last. Or you can set up new idols to replace the ones that that were before. Like I did. I set up the Warriors and Stephen Curry as my idol. And then that came crashing down. Then I set up friends as my idol. And that came crashing down. Then I set up different friends as my idol. And then that came crashing down. And then I set up this this weird idea of religion. And then that came crashing down until I knew what I actually wanted to strive for. And that's union with Jesus. Now, you, wow, you love Jesus. Yes, I do. But that doesn't mean that you should be turned off. Because we think, oh, no, religion really isn't all that. It's not actually going to give me this satisfaction. Like, you can say that, Christian, but that's kind of false. I mean, I, I'm fine with having sex, right? I, I'm a good person. Or I'm fine with watching porn sometimes. And that's just for a little bit of, of fun and, and when I'm bored. And it's not too serious, but that you don't you don't understand the effect that has on your soul, and, and still making that desire and that need deeper. If your plan is to always go to porn when you're bored, how the heck are you not going to go to that over and over and over again? That's just a cycle. How are you going to stop that? Right when you get married, how are you going to stop that? When you fall in love with a person that you really like, how are you going to stop watching that? Do you have any of these answers? Yes. Stop. Stop now. Break the cycle. Turn to something that will actually bring you joy. I think it's hard. I think, I mean, I know that it's hard, but I think it's really difficult for, you know, us to say, just stop to a 15, 16 year old boy or girl who uh, is like hormonally has these urges and like that's the most that they've ever you know so do I I know and I think that the that the part here that I I don't want to make so surface level I want to go deeper into that is because it's I don't think it's as easy as just saying stop I think if it was that easy then a lot of people would do it and I think there should be tools and there should be other things to be said and, and to use in order to really have like you know a way to combat that because How? it's so it's such a thing that that people do all the time and a lot and I think that in our society it's even celebrated as like oh that's just you know knowing your sexuality and yeah. going deeper into that and and so saying to to a lot of kids our age something of just like no actually everything that you've heard about it is is wrong it's a lie and like you have to stop now it's kind of like well let's explain a little bit why and and a way to easier a way to actually like have them so fight against that. yeah but i was just talking about porn yeah. you can't compromise say you can't stop because then you say well i'll just do it once a week no i know but i think that in, in like a deeper level, it's, it can be... F you got to fill that with something else. Fill that with a love and a desire for something else. That's what I have to have been doing. Yeah. Right, because I got those urges all the time. Goodness gracious. Yeah. They're constant. Even more than when I was watching porn. It's all the time now. Which is exactly why I feel like people who are listening, who have the exact same urges as any 16-year-old boy would, is to really be like, well, it can't just be that easy or like Christian can't just be like that, that like self-control because even no, when, you, when you. you have those urges that like, you know, super late at night, you can't just be like, God, like, uh, can you take away the, the feeling or like, God, like I'm lonely. Can you, can you, you know, there's just, I failed. I failed when I first started. I yeah. failed twice. And I 
you know, I knew it was wrong. I knew 100%. I told myself I was going to stop. But then I failed. Right? Mm -hmm. And you can tell yourself that you're going to stop. I've, you know, I told myself when I was in the midst of it that I was going to stop. That this was actually, you know, not worth it. My friends don't even see me. Like, it's not like I'm, I'm getting popular from this. It's not worth it. I told myself I was going to stop. So when dealing with those urges to either masturbate, have sex with, like, your girlfriend, you know, you, you say, how do you give a little easy solution to stop that? You can't just stop if you're a teenage boy without any knowledge of God or without any desire for knowledge of God. Now, now it's really up to us at the end of the day. We got free will. It's up to us to choose. You can't, you know, I can't pray for someone and then say, wow, oh God, you know, just hit them upside the head and, and say, you know, what you're doing isn't the best for you. It isn't the best for this person. I can't say that. I can't do that. I mean, I can pray for their understanding, but I can't make anything happen. It's always a choice. You have to choose to fill those desires up with a love for something else. Now, that love is for God. Not you, oh, Christian. I can't do that. That's not cool. That's not, that's not what everyone else is doing. But do you think everyone else is happy? Do you think that they get long-term satisfaction? What, do you, what, like, what happens when you die? Like, do you want to be like everyone else? Yeah, like, that's the question. You got to not, you, you got to change your desire. Now you, wow, Christian, if, if that was so easy. Now it's not up to us to change that desire. I knew that I would fail. And I failed and I just got so much shame yeah. after I had changed and I thought I would become a better person. And I, I, I thought, wow, Christian, you must be awful. You got this chance to change and you didn't. But then I just asked God, hey, I can't, I can't do this on my own. Goodness gracious, you've seen me. I just failed right in front of you. Yeah. And then I, I say, hey, I can't do this on my own. Make me desire something else. You'll help me. We can't walk alone on this. I, I say to stop, but you got to stop with someone. You got to have someone else point you in the right direction because you could stop that and then turn to something worse. You got to fill that up with something real meaningful. And that's when our idols come crashing down and we replace them with who? God. So that, and it's not, this isn't religion mumbo jumbo. This is just what worked for me. This is what worked for all these, these holy people that just had that love, you know, had that desire for something else, had that desire to get to heaven instead of that desire for a little bit of pleasure on here or on earth on here you talking about so going to you know my main point with that you can't you know really substitute anything with that desire to masturbate with that desire to have sex nothing actually can actually fill that void besides God that that temptations comes too strong right we can have temptations and you will even if you stop but it's our choice to either act on those temptations or let them go away. Say, hey man, I'm struggling here, God. I got these temptations all the time. Just help me to succeed in my plan. Walk with me today. Help me out. Help me to do your will. It's easy as that. And he will. He hears us. And and don't be discouraged if you fail. He wants you to run back to him. He wants, you, he wants to embrace you again. God doesn't think like, wow, if you fail, then... You're done. You're cut off. That's not what God thinks. He'd never think like that. And I thought that for the longest time. I thought I'd been cut off. He gave me a chance. I ruined it. No. He gives you a chance and he'll give you a chance again. Just try, 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 try again. And try harder the next time. If you don't like our podcast, <laughs> all right? If you don't, we're gonna have some troubles.